The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Powermatic, Type Bond, and special sponsor Duluth Trading Company. All right, so today we are going to build a sled, a little snow sled, and the process starts with making the runners. Now, this is something we just did in the previous video, so if you haven't seen that video, go back and watch it because that's how we got this really cool bend in the runners. Uh, and this is where we're going to start. The whole thing is gonna be built upon this. And whenever you have a bent piece in a project, you kinda wanna get that out of the way first because you never quite know exactly what the final shape is going to be. So we do have our runners and we're gonna start building there. Now the main foundation of this sled will consist of supports that span the two runners. So imagine a piece of wood going across like this and you could certainly join them with just screws that go right up through into the supports but I think we could do one better than that by making a very shallow dado that the support can drop into. And then when we use a little bit of glue and then screws for reinforcement, it should be really nice and strong. So I have a very simple way of doing this. We're gonna make the dados using our router. And you can see I've already marked the locations of our dados here. That'll be in the plans if you wanna do that. So first things first, let's throw a clamp on the end so these guys don't slide around. Now I've got my router outfitted with a straight bit. It's three quarters of an inch diameter. And that's nice because we can actually make these dados and then size our support pieces out of solid wood uh, to the proper size after it's cut. And I could simply run it across to create those dados, but I need a straight edge. I need some way to make sure it's nice and straight. I'm gonna line up the bit with my lines. Then I'm just gonna take a scrap piece of plywood that I know has two straight and parallel long edges on it. I'm gonna make sure that that scrap piece of ply is nice and square. And now we should be able to route that dado and it's gonna be about an eighth inch deep. All right, and there we go. Now the depth should be between a 16th and an eighth, but it's not critical as long as they're all the same. Let's grab some solid stock and mill up some three quarter inch supports. We need three of those. These are only a half inch uh, thick, and as we're going over snow, you could just imagine the snow catching on this. So we're gonna have to relieve some of this material. So the width of our runners is two and a quarter, so I can make a line at two and a quarter in from each end. Then I make a line at the center point about three inches up, and I'm just gonna cut an arc in there. So how do we draw that arc? Well, you could certainly use some kind of a drawing bow or bend a piece of wood to that shape. But what I'm gonna do is use my trusty Firehouse Subs Pickle Bucket, which happens to be just about the diameter that I need here to connect those lines. There's our shape. It's looking pretty good. Whoops, so I think we can actually start doing some assembly with these pieces, there's no reason not to. Um, and these uh, runners are right out of the, the bending process, so they're a little dirty looking. We'll clean them up with some sanding first. Now I'm gonna glue these in place first. After the glue dries, uh, we'll then insert some screws. It's just some extra reinforcement. I'm gonna use Type Bond 3 as a waterproof glue. Make sure we get enough in each one of these dados. You can see I've got my clamps pre-set up to make this a whole lot easier. And we'll drop them in, making sure we're nice and flush with the outside edge. Let that glue set up. So the glue is dry on these pieces and we'll worry about the screws uh, for reinforcement a little bit later. Uh, for now, we're gonna move over to the slats, the side rails, and the front rail that goes across. We'll mill all that stock at once. Now the front rail is almost done. We need to put a bevel on it so that when it connects to the front runners here, it actually meets at the correct angle. So we need to know what that angle of the bevel will be. I actually don't care what the number is. I just need to know what the angle is and I could use an adjustable bevel gauge to find it. So I know that I'm gonna interface with the front, the front of this runner right about here. So that's the part where I'm most concerned about. So once I match that up, 
I can now take that to the table saw or draw it on the end of this front rail and then figure out how to cut that with the bevel at the uh, table saw. Now with the bevel cut, you can see how this is gonna work, right? So it just kind of butts up against there. Uh, we will have to trim these front pieces of the runners, but not yet. We need to focus on the slats and the side rails. And now that we have this groove here, um, it's about a quarter inch. I don't care exactly what the number is because I'm gonna mill all of my stock to fit. So all the slats have to fit right into this groove. The outer rails will be a little bit thicker and we'll cut a small little tenon that then fits into this groove. Now with both of these pieces in the front rail, we can see how this is going to work as it engages with the front runner. All right, that looks, looks pretty good for now, but we still need to do our slat pieces, which will go in here. So we just size those to fit in the groove as well. So I have everything now kind of dry assembled, the slats are in place, and you could work on the width of those slats um, really, it's kind of what, what you want it to look like. If you want a big gap between them, make a big gap and you might have to make your slats a little bit smaller. So I've got mine set and I have a little piece of scrap that I used to help me line these up. And when it comes time to do the glue up, this is gonna be really handy. So I have a nice consistent gap all the way across. But I see a problem and I'm actually designing this thing on the fly as I go. You're gonna have a set of plans where everything's worked out. Uh, so you won't have to worry about this. But I noticed that my rails, because they're three quarters of an inch, and the front rail is three quarters and the groove we cut is centered at a quarter inch, our slats are now not sitting at the right height. They're actually a little bit higher than they should be. So I need this whole platform we've made to go down by a quarter inch. And the way to do that is to take our side rail piece, go to the bottom, and we're gonna plane off a quarter inch. So when you make yours, instead of using three quarters for your side rails, you're gonna use half inch, and instead of making a tenon, you're just gonna make yourself a little rabbit on one side and everything should work out. But again, refer to the plans, that's where you're gonna get the actual final numbers and dimensions. So next thing I need to do is draw the shape that I want at the back because this square shape just, eh, it's not gonna look that good. So something rounded would be nice, but all these pieces are moving around and I am not ready to glue anything together yet. So I do have this spacer, right? And I'll use that to space the slats, that's good, but I really need to immobilize everything. So I've drawn a line on the top of the support pieces that tell me where these rails are supposed to go. You need about a three quarter inch overhang and you wanna be about I guess it's about an inch in from the edge. So I've drawn that pencil line, I made sure my rails are consistent, and then I've clamped them down. Of course, these guys can still move around. That's where the shim comes in. So this shim, this little spacer, it works well, but the problem is I only have one. So every time I move things around, it just all shifts. So I'm gonna take this one piece that I know is the correct size, and I'm gonna to try to cut this into about 12 different pieces, giving me 12 spacers that I could leave in place. All right, so I'll go to the chop saw and, and try not to remove a finger. So I'm gonna start putting these spacers in and hopefully they won't uh, fall off. Okay, so all the spacers are in. Everything's looking pretty tight. I'm gonna push up on these slats to make sure they are bottomed out in the groove. Good thing I'm doing this because clearly they're not all bottomed out. And now we could do some kind of a drawing back here. Okay, so I just moved my clamps back one position so that I could easily draw back here. And I have a middle slat. I'm gonna to wanna to line, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm gonna wanna line that represents the center of that slat. Then I'm going to try to make my longest slat at its longest point the same as my bottom runner distance from the back support, that's four inches. So I'm gonna go up against the support there, four inches is right about here. Now that's gonna be the center of this little curve we're gonna put in place. So I've got a drawing bow. You could use a bent piece of wood for this or anything else you might have laying around with a, a nice circular shape. And this is really to taste, whatever you think looks good. Sweet. So now we can disassemble and make these cuts at the bandsaw. All of the parts get a nice eighth inch round over. 
I'll start the glue up by gluing in the side rails first. It's a pretty snug fit, so I don't really feel like I even need clamps here. Just have to make sure that the rails are square. While that dries, I'll take the opportunity to drive some screws through the runners and into the supports. I'm using stainless steel screws. Now I can glue in the slats, using the spacers between each one. Now where these slats meet the rail, you can see there's gaps here. Uh, if this were like a really high-end piece of furniture, I wouldn't let that go. I would either have made actual mortises across here so there would be solid material there, or I would cut small little filler pieces to pop in there. And this is just, this is more or less just a uh, just for fun project. So what I'm gonna do is take some epoxy and backfill. And that's really gonna do two things. It's gonna prevent this from being a place for water to settle. It's also gonna seep in and around these slats to help further stabilize them. So I've got a irrigation syringe, and I don't know if they still do this, but when I had my wisdom teeth removed, my dentist sent me home with a set of these to uh, clean out the hole. Did you get one of those? They just sent me home, dude. See, classy New Jersey dentist. In Missouri, they're just like, just use the garden hose. So I'm just gonna squeeze some of that into those holes. This is what I call precision epoxy pour. All right, so next up, we're gonna lay the platform down onto the sled, kind of get an idea for how this is gonna go. All right, so now I'm just gonna mark my screw locations. I know that the overhang or the portion of the side rails that's on the support piece, it's about an inch. So that means I wanna mark in about a half inch as my screw location. So adjustable square, mark to a half inch, should be good to go. So I'm gonna drill a pilot hole Now I am intentionally not driving these screws all the way down. I'm not even countersinking yet because I don't want to fully sink these. I'll do that when we do our final installation. So I've got the sled on its side right now and this way you can kind of visualize how the angle is going to play a role here. So I've got one inch screws and I have to be very careful about where I place this screw, especially if I want to keep the screw perpendicular to the surface. So if I push in up here, there's not a whole lot of material, right? That screw is gonna punch through the top of that rail. So I'm purposely going to bring my screws down a little bit, sending them in perpendicular, and I should have plenty of depth as long as I stay near this edge. Now with everything else immobilized, my one wonky runner, you could see with a little bit of pressure, it flexes right up into that position. So I'm gonna hold it there with my hand, just do a little bit of drilling. Now we have just a little bit more shaping to do. Everything's kind of immobilized, so it's a good time to visualize what we wanna do, give it some personality, and take away some really sharp edges. So let's start with the front. So first thing I know I wanna do, get rid of this really sharp corner here. And what I need to know is where this runner is gonna start. So I'm just gonna take my pencil and mark the front bevel and put a little mark here. And that's something that we can just kind of dog ear this corner, maybe put a little curve, I don't know, we'll see. But we'll do that once we have this piece off. So I'm gonna make that mark on both sides. I'm also gonna mark on the inside here so I know where that takes place because again, we have another sharp surface that I think we're gonna to need to kind of relieve a little bit of material here so it's just not as dangerous. Final thing we need to do, I'm gonna measure up, let's say about an inch. And then I just have a little curve template. The actual shape of this is really up to you. Just something to round it off a little bit. That doesn't look like it's enough. Something like this. And at the very back, again, you can leave it alone. You could do something uh, with a curve, whatever you want. I'm gonna mimic the curve that we have on our top platform, um, which means we're gonna be high on this side and low on that side. So I'm gonna mark in about three quarters of an inch, five eighths. And then we'll just have a nice little curve that will go kind of like this. Very subtle, all the way up to the corner. Same thing on the other side. All right, now we can remove all those screws, disassemble, and get ready to add all those little contours.
All right, so here it is, a little sled. Uh, I'll be honest, not totally in love with the design, but a sled only needs to have a few things to work. This is just a little project I wanted to make for the kids that hopefully they'll be able to enjoy until they break it, which is probably what they'll do. Uh, but it still was a lot of fun and a great exercise for the whole steam bending thing that I wanted to try out. So at this point, we do need to protect this from the elements. White oak is pretty good in terms of rot resistance, but it still needs to have a finish on it to repel moisture and just keep the wood dry. Um, you could do a bunch of different things. I'm just gonna keep it fairly simple by using, um, this is Gleam 2.0 from Total Boats, Marine Spar Varnish. And I will probably wipe on a few coats just to give it some protection. I probably will not leave this outside. So even if we go sledding, I'm gonna bring it back in and store it inside. So it's something that isn't going to be outside 365. Uh, days of the year. So, let's get to the finish. Now after a few coats of finish, we can add a rope. And then we'll probably in the future have some kind of a handle because just rope alone kind of hurts your hands after a while. So there's our little pull sled. Now there's a few things you could probably do to increase performance. You might consider putting a metal band across the runners here. Um, I'm guessing that just makes things go a little faster as the metal slides over the snow. Uh, but it also protects these wooden runners. You might hit rocks. Uh, I know we have a sledding hill that goes right down toward a parking lot. So you could go off of the snow and onto blacktop. It'd be nice to have some protection there and a sacrificial surface that you could always replace if you need to. Uh, the other thing you wanna do, is wax everything, right? So I'm certainly going to wax these bottoms and just make sure it's nice and slick. Um, but I'm not worried about the metal thing just yet. We'll try that in the future maybe, but I wanna see how it performs first and I don't want anyone to get hurt. So let's see how it goes. <laughs> okay, so maybe our backyard isn't the best place to test this baby out, but it's a reasonable proof of concept. Now, this is really just a pull sled and over time, I'll see how well it does on real sledding hills. I doubt it'll be as fun as those foam sleds, but it certainly looks a lot cooler and the kids love it. I mentioned Duluth at the top of the show and you may have noticed me wearing their pants, shirts, and jackets throughout the video. But since we're headed outside, the entire crew is throwing on their Duluth gear and braving the cold temps to enjoy what little snow we had that day. Be sure to use our link to check out their awesome winter wear. Yeah, daddy. 